everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia and I'm a third year medical student at King's College London. And here on this channel, we create a bunch of different videos to support you with your medical school application and to ensure you get your dream spot at medical school. And I also share with you all of my own advice I've learned along the way in my own medical school journey. So if you do like the sound of that, do make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified every single time we post. And also make sure to follow us on all of our social media links because we love interacting with you guys. Now for today's video, very excitingly, the time has come where many of you will be off to medical school. We've been talking to a bunch of you and we're really excited to hear that many of you have got your dream spot and are going to medical school this coming September. It's an amazing, insane, difficult, and really rewarding journey. And so what I wanted to do today was to make a video all about the top tips I wish I'd known before going to medical school. So I hope that many of you guys that are going to university this September will take some tips away from this video and you won't make the same mistakes I did. And even if you're not going to medical school this September, I still think there's some really useful information in here for you too. The first tip I have for you if you're starting medical school in September is do not buy any textbooks. Now my reason for this is because they are so expensive. If you're new to university life, it will be a bit of a shock to you that most university textbooks are around the sort of 60, 70 pound region. You can usually get them for second hand slightly cheaper, but they are so expensive. And I'm here to tell you that I managed to get a first class BSc and I'm doing all right in medical school without ever purchasing a textbook. All of the textbooks that you need will be found in your local university library. And if you can't get hold of them there, there are always a bunch of different PDFs and eBooks that are available to you too. So I honestly just think it is the biggest waste of money and I wouldn't bother. And to be quite honest with you, I think other resources are far more useful. So things like YouTube videos, things like Teach Me Anatomy for Anatomy, Ken Hub, all of those different websites offer a bunch of free resources that are quite honestly more succinct and more engaging than a boring old textbook. Having said that, my second tip is to buy yourself an anatomy coloring book. Now I'm not counting this as a textbook because I think it's more fun. It's more of like a arts and crafts kind of vibe than a boring textbook. And honestly, I recommend this because it helped me learn anatomy so much better and in a much more engaging manner than just reading a boring textbook and going through my lectures. And the reason for that is because, you know, it's just, it's fun. You get to color, it feels like you're working, but you know, it's a bit more leisurely than that. I had a great time, look at that. Now I can remember all the bones of the skull if I, if I like really try. But that's not the point. It was fun, I enjoyed the process and I really recommend you get yourself an anatomy coloring book. I love netters. I'm a massive fan of netters anatomy in general. I think it is superior to greys. So yeah, I said what I said. Um, but yes, definitely recommend getting an anatomy coloring book. My next bit of advice is a bit of a controversial one potentially, but it may come as a disappointment to hear that I don't recommend you buy a stethoscope for your first year of medical school. And the reason for this is because, you know, it's really exciting to buy yourself a stethoscope before you start medical school. I was gifted one by my parents for my birthday, but quite frankly, you just don't get enough use out of it. And moreover, in Freshers' Fair, you'll find that you often get given coupons and discounts for really good stethoscopes. So not only will you be saving yourself money, but you know, you'll just be saving yourself the hassle of getting a stethoscope when you really don't need one. In first year with most universities, you won't be doing that many clinical skills because your clinical years only tend to start in around year three. Of course, this varies for different universities. So for example, in King's, we needed stethoscopes for year two because that's when we start clinical placement, but it does vary. So if I were you, I would hold off at least for the first term because you never know, you might end up saving yourself a bunch of money. Also, if ever you're doing some clinical skills which require a stethoscope, the medical schools will more often than not have stethoscopes on hand for you. So even if you don't bring your own, that's absolutely fine. My next bit of advice is something I only started doing towards the end of my second year and I wish I'd done it from the start of first year and that is to keep quizzing yourself constantly throughout the year using past med. 
Now, PassMed is something I've spoken about before, and it's basically an online question bank, which a bunch of medical students use. It's kind of like the golden resource in medical school. And that's because in medical school, many of your examinations are in the format of a multiple choice question style. And PassMed really cater towards this because it's a huge question bank. And so a lot of the questions you're asked are going to be very similar to what you're going to find in your exam. I massively found that to be the case. And what's great about PassMed is they have a pre-clinical years question bank. So even if you're in years one and two, there are a bunch of different questions that will test you on basic anatomy and physiology, pharmacology, all that good stuff. And they also have a clinical years question bank. So when you get a bit more advanced and you start learning clinical medicine, you can be quizzed in that style as well. And I found it so, so helpful just to reinforce what I know, what I remember. And it's going to become pretty much the only way I revise moving forwards. I'm just gonna keep testing myself using question banks because I think that reaps the most rewards. And it really forces you to actively recall information instead of just like passively writing notes, which I really suggest you avoid. My next bit of advice is to keep up to date with your lectures. And I know that sounds really obvious, but the reason I want to reiterate this, especially Especially for new incoming first year medical students is because in first year it's a bit of a lecture overload. You will have a bunch of different lectures covering basic science to very early clinical medicine and it can become really overwhelming but it will be more overwhelming if you don't stay on top of your lectures and unfortunately by the time you have your summer examinations you'll probably be examined on around 200 250 lectures so if you leave revising and cramming last minute it's really going to come back to bite you so I really suggest trying to get into the habit of doing like a weekly review of your lectures perhaps it's easier said than done but honestly it just makes the whole revision process that much easier when it gets to exam season Season. I found exam seasons significantly less stressful and way more chill than I otherwise would have so definitely recommend. The next tip I have is again perhaps a controversial one but I recommend taking electronic notes. Now this is coming from someone who is converted like I only hand wrote my notes. I was like I could never convert to doing electronic notes it's just not in me it would be like you know it would be a crime and I'm just never gonna do it but here I am a few years down the line and I now take all of my notes on an iPad, which I do recommend you get if you have some spare money. It's not a compulsory thing by any means, but it's really, really helped me out in my medical school years. And it's definitely something I'm going to continue to be using. But an alternative I've been absolutely loving and sharing with all my friends is making use of a bit of software called Notion. You can download it for free on your laptop and it's basically just a fantastic tool. So what I use Notion for for is I write myself some questions and then I use the toggle function to show the answers. So again, I try and avoid taking lecture notes in that sort of like traditional verbatim format. I'm trying to make sure that I'm actively recalling the information. So now all of my lectures are within a sort of like question and answer kind of format. And I found that worked really well for me this year and I'm going to continue to do that. My next bit of advice for starting medical school is to make sure you dedicate that allocated time in your week where you don't don't study. Now, as medical students, we are kind of the type A sort of students where we could spend all day studying, we're all kind of geeks, and you know, you're surrounded by people who are super, super ambitious. And because of that, it can become very easy to slip into that kind of mindset where you think, I need to be studying every single day but that is just a recipe for burnout and I highly, highly suggest you don't fall into this very toxic pattern of just spending every single day at the library because not only is it just not healthy for you, you're not going to be able to retain as much information if you're tiring yourself out, but also you're going to be missing out on the really fun, sociable side of medical school. Remember, you know, medicine is such a sociable subject and so it's important that we're setting that time aside to, you know, meet some new people, do other things outside of medical school that we enjoy. So actually, if you didn't already know, on Wednesday afternoons, all universities have an allocated sports afternoon slot where basically there are no lectures and 
you're not really expected to attend workshops unless of course you're higher up in medical school and you're on placement but in the first few years at least you have that kind of like dedicated time where you don't have to do anything so make the most of it join some societies join some sports clubs or you know just chill out and have a fun Netflix night but my point being make sure that you do have that work social life balance and finally my last bit of advice when it comes to going to medical school is a bit more of a serious one but I did want to mention it because I think it is so important medical school is so much fun it's an incredible experience but it can also be extremely intimidating it is tiring it is hard work it is stressful and the hours are long and the content is relentless so what i do want to say is that if you are struggling do make use of your personal tutors so my next tip is to make sure you know where your points of care are so you might have a head of year you can talk to if you're struggling you'll have a personal tutor you might have a clinical tutor if you're a Bit higher up in medical school but make sure you understand who you can talk to if you are stressed and know where those outlets are chances are if you are feeling stressed a lot of your other colleagues will be feeling stressed so i think it's always a good idea to talk to them about how you're feeling and perhaps if one of your stresses is the workload you can kind of get together and alleviate that by collaborating on making notes or testing one another or making little study sessions together where you can all go and just hang out that's something i've done a lot and i find it really nice because it's just a bit more sociable than sitting in my room and revising on my own. So I definitely, definitely recommend reaching out for some extra support if you feel you need it. So those are all my tips for all the new medics starting in September. It is such an exciting time and you should be so proud of yourself for getting this far. And if you're in the midst of your application process, I wish you the very best of luck. This could be you next year and before you know it, you'll be in medical school and it will all have been worth it. I hope you guys found this video informative. Do let me know if you'd like me to do a part two because I'm sure there's some other tips that I can think of. Other than that, make sure you have subscribed to our channel if you haven't already. Turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified when we post and do come and follow us on all of our social media links. Let me know in the comments down below if you are heading to medical school this September, what you're excited about, what you're nervous about. Let's have a conversation. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!